Hello, my name is Andrew Klein and I came back from the Midwest Tool Collectors Association meet today with a project. I want to fix this dovetail saw that someone has badly mistreated. So in order to fix that damage, I'm going to need to replace this blade. It's damaged beyond repair. Uh, to do that, I am going to scrap this saw that is very good steel. This is a Sandvik. Uh, however, it's pitted and in pretty rough shape with the back third. But as you can see, there's enough good steel uh, on this saw to make a replacement blade for this. Uh, hopefully it works out. It's a little thicker. That's going to be the big challenge. We'll see how that goes. Um, so stick around if, if you're into seeing that kind of a restoration. But you probably want to stop watching if, if destroying a tool, no matter its condition, is, is going to be painful, you to, painful for you to watch. I know that's, that's uh, something that bothers some people. So, so shut it off now, otherwise stick around, we'll see how it goes. So first I get the saws apart. And these nuts are going to cause some problems. But we'll get to that in a second. So I mark out a blank that's larger than what I need. For those curious, this is a standard porta ban in a stand from uh, Swag Offroad, and I'll leave a link to their site. I've been real happy with it. it comes in very handy. And I use some of the scrap steel to make a tool to get those nuts off. Does the job okay? And back came off the old blade without too much persuasion. Okay, so now for the challenging part to make this blank thinner. I use my drum sander, which is really a bad idea. Um, I have a belt that's in bad shape and, and also the sanding strip on the drum is in bad shape. So I need to replace them all uh, anyway. I certainly wouldn't recommend this, probably in any case, but certainly not if, if you have a new drum and belt because as you can see the hot metal slag coming out of this thing really not meant to do this um, it ended up working out and I didn't burn the shop down uh, but, but probably not the best thing to go repeating and I was curious just how badly uh, I, I would damage the, the sandpaper and it's really not as bad as I thought uh, it, it was already in pretty rough shape and, and it's it's a bit worse but it didn't damage the sandpaper as much as I thought it would. But again, not recommending it. Okay, so now I can fine tune the, the new blade and get the shape that I need. Took a bit more hammering and and uh, persuading to get the back on the new blade. I think it still might have been just a little bit thicker than the old one, but it's pretty close. I just drill the holes out in place, and I found my my uh, tool lacking uh, a bit. It, it kept uh, popping out and damaging the nuts, so I decided to take the time to actually set it in a wood handle and, and shorten up little prongs uh, and that made it work quite a bit better. So now it's time to deal with the teeth. Now, now the old saw was 10 teeth per inch and that's just too much for a little dovetail saw. Uh, so I'm going to take this to 20 which means I have to file the 
teeth down quite a bit so that the flat spots are larger than the little recesses so that I can cut a new recess in between each one of them and end up with 20 teeth per inch, which is a lot of saw filing. Here's my homemade um, saw blade vise that works with the end vise on my, on my bench. And this block helps me keep the angle consistent. And so I just carefully file in between each of the old teeth to make new smaller teeth. Now 20 teeth per inch, that's, that's pretty small. It's not going to cut very fast, but should be pretty accurate. I probably would have picked 16 teeth per inch if I had to choose, but then I would have had to start completely from scratch. It was just easier to go with 20. And the handle was chipped pretty badly, so I had to reshape it. Uh, and that meant that I needed to take all the old patina off, which I probably wouldn't have done if it hadn't been for the damage, but there's really no choice. I clean the dust off with mineral spirits. And uh, just put some boiled linseed oil on it. I shine up the brass nuts and bolts with a hard polishing wheel and polishing compound. And then put it together and give it a test run. And I didn't put any set in these teeth. Um, and, and they're not precisely even. I probably need to go through a, a full sharpening routine again try to get some set in those little teeth, but even considering those facts, it's not cutting too bad. This is a piece of hickory and fairly thick for a 20 tooth per inch saw, and, and it cut slowly but straight and wasn't binding up. It's, it's performing pretty well, and I think I can probably get it uh, to perform even better. So I'd call this a success. Thanks for watching.